Question number two for part F, long answer questions. It says individuals and organizations around the world make extensive use of IT, that's information technology systems. Legislation relating to the use of IT systems impacts on individuals and organizations, assess the role of current legislation in protecting users and their data from attack and misuse. You should consider computer misuse, copyright, and the protection of data. Learners are not expected to quote verbatim and also, you're not expected to write down every single one of the answers I'm giving you here. These are just some possible answers put together with your own knowledge based on the scenario that you're given that you could use. Okay, so please don't go in there and try to remember everything I say. Look at the question within its context and answer within that context. Because that previous question, I assumed it was going to be about um, Wi-Fi and laptops and which one is better for this. Because I don't even remember what section I am on, right? So again, remember, you don't need to use every single answer here. Use the ones that you think you need. The learners may refer to the following legislation. However, they should not be penalized for incorrect titles and or dates. Other relevant legislation should be accredited or should be credited. Computer Misuse Act 1990, Police and Justice Act 2006, that still covers computer misuse. Copyright Designs and Patent Act of 1988, the Copyright Regulations 1992, that's computer programs specifically, the Data Protection Act of 1998, Data Protection Act of 2008, incorporating general, uh, well, GDPR uh, 2018. So this new updated 2018 Act adds to the 1998 one and also incorporates the GDPR stuff that we've been getting emails about. All right, so let's go into the details now. So it says computer misuse, police and justice set up to deal with hackers unauthorized access to computers that is those with the aim of stealing information or causing malicious damage illegal activities include unauthorized access to computer material access access with intent to commit further offenses modification of computer material making supplying obtaining material that could be using computer misuse offenses so anyone here that plays games or likes gta 5 i'm sure you guys have seen the gta 6 recently so it is now the 26th of september 2022 those leaks came out about a week ago. This covers all of that. The person, apparently a, a UK male, 17, 18 years-ish, hacked into Rockstar's servers, I'm guessing, through whatever vulnerability he or she found. Um, they said it was a male, but I actually don't remember. right? Um, and they accessed information. And not only did they access it, they didn't make any changes to it, apparently, but they copied it and released it to the world. Now, this was apparently the biggest game uh, game leak in history. Rockstar is, I would estimate at this stage, a trillion dollar company or very close to it. They've made billions and billions of dollars off the games that they've sold, so this could impact the company negatively. However, it's had the opposite effect. The company's stock shares, uh, stock prices went up. People started asking more about the company. What's coming next? When is GTA 6 coming? But the point is the person stole. They you they misuse the computer to get into that network and steal information or steal data. Type of activity um, which are illegal include using a username and password to log into someone else's account, computer phishing. So your friend giving you their details and you giving it to someone else without letting the friend know is actually an offense in most cases. It might not be seen as illegal in your company or school, but it is an offense. Uh, phishing is also a massive one. Remember, this is where people try to get hold of your personal information or details using nefarious methods, using bad methods, trying to lie to you, to trick you, sending you those weird emails or text messages saying, click on this link to log into this and change this. That's where they would get your details and they can then log into those original accounts and then make all the changes that they want, affecting your life in some cases massively. Introducing viruses or malware. I'm going to skip viruses and just say malware. Because remember, malware means malicious software and malware covers everything under viruses because it's a piece of software that does bad things. Malware, malicious means bad and we're from software, so simply bad software. A virus is a bad software as well. Creating malware, intentionally passing on a malware. So more or less the same thing here. This all has to do with malware, these last two anyway. These activities do not need to be successful. It, it is the intention which is illegal. Now, if you think about it, that's not illegal. That's not an intention. That's simply a thought, right? The intention is, I am going to do this. You might fail at doing it, but the intention is there. The intention to do some, something illegal. Let's say you go to rob a store. Please don't rob any stores. 
let's say you go to rob a store, you have an illegal gun, you walk into the store, but you are challenged by someone who has a gun as well, or you run out the store for some reason. It is not the fact that you didn't rob the store, the fact that you had the intention to rob the store. You had a gun, you walked into a store, you tried to rob people. Whether it was successful or not, you still had the intention to do it. Okay? Organizations must have procedures in place to control actions of internal users, setting up password procedures to access accounts, file permissions, access level. Let me just go over these again because it's been a while since I've done unit one stuff and it might have been a while since you've watched those videos. Setting up password procedures uh, to access accounts. So typically speaking, your schools, your colleges, your universities, they normally say, you know what, um, every three to four months, your password should change. Your password must have uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, special characters, all of these things, right? So that, that could be a password procedure. Every so often it changes and you must have special characters. File permissions. When we think about this, think about a hierarchical structure where we have the principal, vice principal, head of department, teacher, student. The person that has the most control over the system should be the person at the very, very top. So let's just say in this case, for argument's sake, the principal can control everything else. And the vice principal can control most things. The head of department can control some things. Teachers barely get any control. Students don't get any control. So that's what file permissions are. You give permission to the people who need to access it, people who need to view it, people who need to edit it. Very, very simple, right? So think, think about when you guys go on, I don't know, OneDrive or Google Drive and you share a document with someone so that you two can edit the same document at the same time. You only give people who need to edit, edit permissions. You can share it with other people so that they can view it. So let's just say I'm editing a document, right? My mother knows how to use a PC relatively okay. My dad, not so much. What I would do, I would give my mother edit permissions and I would give my dad view permissions. So he can see it, but he cannot edit it. And my sister, my younger sister, let's say I would give her edit permissions because she's no, she knows what the, all three of them know how to use computers very, very well, right? And then lastly, we have access levels, more or less the same kind of thing. Who can access certain types of resources? And again, the head teacher of a school should be able to access more or less everything. The teacher's details, the student's details, other teachers, other um, members of staff details as well. A typical teacher shouldn't be able to do that. The typical teacher should only be able to access maybe the details of, her, of his or her students and nothing else or well, no one else. Next, um, have procedures in place to monitor actions of internal users and take remedial actions. So we need to monitor what's going on. If someone tries to open something that's malicious, it should say, oh, whoa, this is going to be a problem and stop it, right? That's number one. Remedial actions, how do we fix that problem? How do we then rectify it? How do we ensure it doesn't happen again? Um, have procedures in place to control attack from external forces. Example, firewall. We know what a firewall is. Again, a firewall is not literally a wall of fire. It's simply a tiny program, typically, that monitors, we have to use that word, a firewall monitors network traffic, well, the good ones anyway, monitors network traffic and blocks or should block anything suspicious, anything that it thinks is malicious or bad or should be going in or going out. That's what a firewall is supposed to do. Okay, down here, have recovery procedures in place in case of a successful attack. Let's just say someone hacks my PC right now and gets every single file on here. Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, I have everything backed up on Google Drive, on OneDrive, and an external hard drive, and an external memory stick. I might lose, let's say, a week's worth of work. The last two videos I did, I did them in one sitting. So I might lose that video in case they wipe my entire PC. But it's like, it's not the end of the world. I still have hundreds of gigabytes of other things I have elsewhere. Individuals should be aware of possible threats and methods they can take to prevent threats or risks. Example, strong passwords, firewalls, etc. on individual devices. That's very true. The stronger your password is, the harder it will be for someone to crack that password. The more combinations there are, the harder it's going to be again. Let, that's why they say uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, special characters. It's, it's, it's much harder to crack those passwords. We are, I mean, I already went over what a firewall is. Having a firewall on individual devices is very good. I think we've done network diagrams anyway, but just imagine you only had a firewall at the router, so the traffic going in and out from one single router, that's okay in most cases. However, a better solution would be to have multiple firewalls. So every single device in a school, office, home, every smartphone, tablet, it has its own firewall, plus there's a firewall on the router as well. So that's double protection, right? So copyright three and four above. The copyright stroke computer program above is specific to computer software and was added later. Okay, so they're just saying that 
the copyright software PCs was added later on, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, set up to protect the rights of the creators of material, which may be uh, literary, drama, art, musical works, and software to control how the material is used. Software includes all kinds of technological works used in different platforms, tablet PCs, phones, such as apps, um, office software, operating systems, virtual reality environments, so on and so forth. So anything that is software, anything that is a program on a, on anything that is a program, sorry, on an electronic device would be classed as software. What is what once it is not a tangible thing on the device, it is software. In terms of software, it is illegal to make a copy of the software to sell it and give it to someone else, use software on a network without a license. So typically schools have what's known as a site license, right? So the entire school will have Microsoft Office, Microsoft Windows, Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft this, Microsoft that, because they pay Microsoft a set fee per month and they get a site license, a, a license for the entire campus, right? In terms of software, it is illegal to make a backup copy of a software or data for personal use. Many of us do this sometimes. I do this sometimes. So when I download programs, for example, open source stuff or free stuff, I simply make a backup of it so I don't have to download it again. However, what they're saying is I'm not allowed to make a backup of the software if it is not um, free or not free or not open source. I'm supposed to only go to the source to get it. As a basic example, a copyright works can be used for private study or research with permission from the owner with a license if it is covered by fair use exemptions. So here on YouTube, there um those background musics you hear in my other videos, if you do watch any of them, that's that stuff is fair use. That stuff was given by YouTube so we can have some audio to use in our videos. Users of copyright materials must acknowledge sources. So if I use someone else's work, I must um, acknowledge where I got it from. Now, if you watch my other videos on coursework stuff, on referencing, I always say, read it understand it rewrite it and reference it never ever 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 whether it be secondary school college or uni never copy and paste anything and say it's yours because that's a lie and if it's found out to be well if it's found out that that it's a lie you've broken copyright rules right you've plagiarized protection of data dpa and gdpr brings uk into the um, in line with european legislation impact on individuals are different from impact on organizations again gives rights to individuals about how their data is collected, processed or used, kept up to date or accurate, given rights on accessing data. So I can call a company and say, you know what, I don't like where you guys operate. Can you please delete all my data? And they'll have a set amount of time to do that. Impact on organizations must set up uh, restrictions on how personal computer data can be used, must take responsibility for complying with the principles of the acts, must have processes and records in place to show compliance typically speaking this is done by the it department they'll they'll go and do some gdpr training course and come back with all the knowledge and have some booklet that they share with people and at meetings they'll have a talk with you guys as well not something that students typically have to um, worry about because it is the higher ups that deal with that general points oh this is a lot guys sorry i'm reading as fast as i can Organizations should include detailed guidelines for all legislation in their acceptable use policy. Individuals within the organization must be aware of what the legislation entails. The steps they as individuals must take to adhere to the, legis the legislation and the consequences of not doing so, both internally and legally. Whew, that was everything. Okay, that was a bit rushed. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, feel free to pause the video, go back, pause the video, read it yourselves. I will be at some point putting all these answers on the website as soon as I finish making it. I haven't even started yet. That's going to be another video as well, but hopefully that was helpful.